hope he fails. And now, the conservative corner that specializes in conspiracy theories has been inspired by the president's plan to address students next week. Consequently, the indoctrinators are spreading the word about what this speech really means. President Obama is coming for your children. This is what Chairman Mao did, Laura. Oh, my this God. This is like Max Headroom. This is going into oh, every Max single Headroom. classroom. There is no Monica. escape from him. They do this type of thing in North Korea and the former Soviet Union. We know that the left has always used kids in public schools as guinea pigs and as junior lobbyists for their uh, social liberal agenda. Now, that sounds far-fetched, but it does explain the shadowy juice box lobby and the plank of the Democratic platform about getting rid of nap time and changing the preamble of the Constitution from we the people to mom. According to the White House, the text of the president's speech will be released on Monday so that parents can read it ahead of time. It will cover such controversial subjects as setting goals and staying in school. But predictably, they're going with the whole evil socialist dictator conspiracy theory instead. And it's not just a pundit talking point anymore. There are actual elected politicians using it. Minnesota Governor Tim Pawlenty told a local radio station today that the president's speech for two children is uninvited and that he's concerned about the content and the motive of the speech. Florida Republican Party Chair Jim Greer released a statement this week saying, I am absolutely appalled that taxpayer dollars are used to being spread to President Obama's socialist ideology. And Republican State Senator Steve Russell of Oklahoma told their Oklahoman, this is akin to something you would see in North Korea or under Saddam Hussein's Iraq. Right, that oft-forgotten other fake reason we avoided Iraq, invaded Iraq. Too many children in school. Our third story tonight, the Republican Party's last hope, urging America to just stay home from school, just say no to education. Reading our fundamental. <laughs> it stems, of course, from Obama-phobia, irrational fear of a black man running the country, and his speech on Tuesday addressing America's school children. Naturally, the idea of an American president addressing America's school children is inherently terrifying. So Glenn Beck and other academic elites on the right are now actually telling parents to keep their kids home from school on Tuesday. Skip school, now a mainstream Republican position. We'll show those truant officers. Why is this? Because the Department of Education lesson plan has suspicious questions for kids to ask. I would not normally have a problem with any president that wants to address school children, wants to encourage them to study hard, to develop, uh, to, to learn, to have a great education, uh, to inspire them that America is the greatest country and they can be all they can be. But when you read the specifics here, what is the president asking me can, to do? How can I help the president? Now we're getting into an area where uh, it seems very close to indoctrination or at least has the potential. You missed a question, Sean. How about this one? Does this speech make you want to do anything? Because, of course, all good indoctrination first asks you whether or not you want to be indoctrinated. And then there's Michelle Malkin and that blank stare warning that, quote, it's not about the text. He'll actually deliver a very innocuous speech. Wait, what? Oh, I see. Teachers will then urge their kids to write letters to demonize Obamacare. <laughs> <laughs> To demonize Obamacare opponents. So where did this insidious idea come from that President Obama should teach America's kids? Perhaps from the article for the cover of Parade Magazine last month, What President Obama Can Teach America's Kids by Mr. William O'Reilly. Or maybe from this guy who spoke to America's kids as campaign season began in October 1991, asking kids to write him, telling him what they could do to help him achieve his goals. I, I think what you have here is um, a bunch of people who really don't believe that uh, Barack Obama is legitimately president of the United mm -hmm. States, whether that's out of racism or some other motivation is not clear, um, but they're trying to delegitimize him in any way they can, be as disrespectful, uh, not just to him, but to the office as they can, and to my mind, to be actually what I would call unpatriotic in their approach. And by that I mean that if you believe in this country, uh, you know that education is the only route up. And that